Everyone's talking about zone two training right now. Getting fitter and faster without having to ride hard. It sounds great, right? But really, how effective is it? To find out, I'm gonna become a human guinea pig. Right, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start off with a baseline fitness test of not having done too much riding recently. And I'm gonna be training in zone two and zone two only. Only. For the next six weeks to see if one, my anaerobic zone two fitness improves, two, to see if my FTP improves, and three, to see if my anaerobic capacity improves. It's a lot to ask of little old zone two, but is it gonna live up to the hype? Let's find out. Before I kick off this experiment, I've got some work to do. Firstly, I need to establish my current fitness levels and most crucially, find out what my zone two is so I know how hard I'm gonna be training. How am I gonna do that? Well, I'm off to a sports science lab to get the most accurate results I can. A lot has been said about how to find your zone two, and it's worth noting that I wouldn't be able to find my zone two off just heart rate and power alone. But if you don't have access to a sports science lab, there are some pretty accurate methods out there, which we have covered in a previous video. So if you want to find your zone two, go check that out. But after you finish watching this video. Then once I have established my zone two, I'm going to need a training plan, a very monotonous one, but I thought I'm going to need a little bit of professional advice on this one to make sure I'm doing enough to make a difference. So I got in touch with my old coach to see if he'd be willing to help me out. And he was, and he's very used to working with very professional athletes that are world and Olympic champions. I did let him know that I was a, a lot slower and a lot unfitter than I previously was. And he was still keen to work with us. So that's great. But now let's get to the lab to do some testing. This is the University of Bath, home to a host of the UK's best athletes as well as a few thousand students. The head of the lab, Jonathan Robinson, is a familiar face to diehard GCN viewers and will be putting me through my paces today. We'll be doing a gradual ramp test, increasing the intensity gradually every one minute to get an accurate gauge of how my body is responding to the effort levels. We'll also be doing a step test where the power will be increased by 20 watts every four minutes. To find my zone two, we are looking for the intensity where my blood lactate begins to increase, along with my breathing rate as well. He'll also be analysing the ratio of carbon dioxide in my breath, which will also tell him when my body is shifting metabolic gears. So I've done a bit of a warm up and we're going to get straight into the step test. And Jonathan said it's not going to hurt too much. Yeah, promise. Hopefully. Let's do it. So, what is zone two? The theory goes that it's the optimal exercise intensity to simulate your mitochondria. If you can remember your high school biology, you'll know these as your cells power plants. These tiny organelles proliferate in your cells and essentially turn the food that you eat into energy. The more mitochondria you have, the better they function, the fitter, faster and healthier you become. The idea of zone two is to train in a way that puts maximal strain on your mitochondria because when you go above zone two, you use a different metabolic system and the training stimulus moves elsewhere. However, if you improve your mitochondrial function, you not only improve your zone two level, but in theory, you are able to perform better at higher intensities too, because your body is more efficient. So that's why in theory, zone two training might also help increase my FTP. Wow. Oh. I felt like I was dribbling in there. <laughs> <laughs> How did it feel though? Oh, yeah, not too bad. Got a little bit spicy towards the end, but on the whole, all right, I think. How did you feel about the ramp test? Yeah, I felt scared. So that was a nice warm up, but I know the ramp test is going to hurt like a, like a lot. <laughs> oh dear. So next up we have the ramp test, which is going to hurt a lot. Am I ready for this? No but we're gonna crack on with it anyway. Let's see how far I can get. Come in. 
Yeah, just as hard, but I'm like 10 times as unfit as the last time I did one, which is not great for morale. But you know, the end of this six weeks, fingers crossed. I mean, it's still gonna hurt, isn't it? But hopefully I'll be fitter. So I have got my test results. That's all that's left to do now is send them over to coach Lawrence at The Complete Athlete, so he can have a look at them and set my training for the next six weeks. So, Lawrence, first of all, would you ever recommend Zone 2 training for six weeks to any of your athletes? Probably the only time I'd use it would be if someone really was struggling for capacity to ride, like, regularly. If you wanted someone to ride more, more, just more hours in the week. Um, so I've used it with one pro rider before where we've just done six weeks of low intensity just to build up capacity. But generally, no. The, there's other intensities that are really important. And... Six weeks, is it enough time to really see a difference? I think from your starting point, Manon, absolutely. Okay. I but think if someone was really if someone was really well trained and someone had been riding lots frequently, you know, recently I mean and been doing a lot of training, you're not gonna see any big shifts on in this area. But from starting up for a lower point, I think you'll see some good gains in six weeks, yeah. And then moving on to my test results. Not sure I'm ready for this, but first of all, give me an idea of what my zone two is. So your zone two for you is somewhere around um, probably sort of that 120 to 140 watts, something like that, um, heart rate, um, sort of 135 to 155, um, how are you if you're using heart rate as well. So okay. not a big power number and actually not a big uh, sort of percent of your maximal intensity. Just the way your profile is, your your zone two is sort of up to lactate threshold, that first point of the where the lactate curve breaks, um, and you see that in the graph um, in your in your report, and that actually occurs at quite a low percent of your aerobic capacity um, of your VO2 max or VO2 peak. And when I'm doing my zone two training, is it more important to focus on the power or the heart rate? Yeah, so really important to use that combination. The problem is when we talk about sort of lactate threshold and that first change in the blood lactate curve, we tend to call it a precise number and we've got that on your report, but actually it occurs at a, a much wider transition in a much wider band than we think. And obviously when you get tired, things in your physiology change and you can shift across into zone three before you know it. So heart rate's a really good guide. It's obviously still influenced by things like heat and hydration, uh, which is where you've got to combine RPE as well. Um, but what, what's really good about heart rate is as you get fitter, and in the six weeks you will get fitter, what you should find is that, let's say you're training at 145 beats a minute or 145 to 150, your power should gradually creep up over the six weeks. So that way, by using heart rate and RPE, um, sort of the six to 20 board scale, you'll make sure you're at the same sort of perceived effort, same heart rate response. Um, for an increase in power as you get fitter. So it's a bit of a better guide than just relying on power. And then moving on to my training, what is my training going to look like for the next six weeks? Is it just going to be slogging along for hours at the same power and the same heart rate? Zone two training, absolutely. So I think the the, the thing with this idea of zone two training is it's, it's below lactate threshold, it's steady, but within there, there's still a big difference in training intensity. So it's about finding that balance between duration and intensity. How many hours a week am I looking at to start with? I think we started somewhere around, you know, four to six hours in the first bit. That'd be pretty good. And then gradually build that up. Well, thank you very much. I'm looking forward to getting my training plan. And I'm going to catch up with you in three weeks time at the halfway point. See how my training's going. Mega. Good luck with it. Thank you very much. Right. I've got my zone two and I've got my training plan for the next six weeks. That's all that's left to do is ride in zone two and zone two only. But if you want to keep up to date with all the training I'm doing, make sure to head over to Strava to give me a follow where I'm going to be logging all of my rides. And I'm going to be doing a fair few of my rides indoors as well on Zwift. And if you'd love to come and ride with me and join me, head over to the GCN club where we're going to put some rides on where you can come and join me. But so all that's left to do now is get training. But let me know in the comment section, what do you think is going to happen in six weeks time? Am I going to get fitter? Who knows?